How's it going everyone? My name is Dallas aka Infernus, and today we're going to be talking about the most disturbing banned YouTube videos. And the first thing you may be thinking is, what videos that are banned can you possibly access? And the answer to that question is, everything. Because I'm the master. Now, thank you so much to the Tekkit Squad members of this channel, and you're supporting this channel, allowing it to continue to run, and especially thank you to our god-tier level member Sam.exe. If you want to become a member of this channel, you can go down about two inches below this screen and click that little button. And also, while you're at it, you might as well just make that black button gray, because... I'll be your best friend. Aww. Now these are vaguely in order from least scary to most scary. This way you can run to the store while you have this playing in the background and go ahead and buy yourself some Pampers in time before the end of it, which conveniently is also today's sponsor. Finally. And number one is Steven McCallag. And this is where we're already taking a very deep and dark turn, just in the first example of this video, because we're talking about, unfortunately, a real-life crime. On the night of December the 17th, 2022, residents of the North Ireland community of Lurgan heard a scream coming from one of their neighbor's houses. The occurrence was late and loud enough to wake up many in the area after hearing continual sounds of distress that followed after. Somebody in the area had reported seeing a figure walk out of a completely dark house of which the screams came from and walk off casually from the scene identified as the house of Natalie McNally. The authorities would then show up the next morning to the usually sleepy neighborhood to find the victim left at the scene killed. They had found that Natalie had been stabbed repeatedly in the neck and finally killed with a blunt object. She was 15 weeks pregnant. In this particular case, we're talking about a crime that took place in North Ireland. This woman, Natalie, was unfortunately killed inside of her house. Now the authorities would not show up to the neighborhood until the very next morning, when they were actually alerted by Natalie's spouse, which in this case is Steven. Now, Steven runs a YouTube channel, and on this channel, they do kind of like gaming commentaries and other various forms of videos, and they had over 40,000 subscribers. That's a considerable amount of subscribers. But now, on this particular night, when this crime happened, Steven was live streaming for six hours straight, and it was just a normal live stream, similar to the likes of what this channel had done in the past. So it basically was kind of like a situation where something had gone very wrong, and Steven, of course, was just at home the whole time, and he went back to her house after visiting to pick up his phone that he had left there, the next day, when he had found the crime scene. And this crime scene is where the authorities started to kind of get a little bit suspicious. And the reason for that is what we're going to get into next. Stephen was apprehended, arrested, and they asked him some questions because, of course, they wanted to clear all the grounds and get all the information possible. Now, Steven, of course, had been live streaming the night and the time that all this took place, so he was let go, and from that point on, he was just kind of the end of the situation when it came to his perspective. He kept on making videos and even a video a month later after the situation, just like any normal one of his uploads, and everything was just as if it was back to normal. Steven went back home and continued to make videos, one even coming out in January of 2023, just like any of his other uploads. This case was immediately closed and classified as unsolved. It wasn't until two months later did anyone actually take a second look, however, at Steven's YouTube channel. Specifically, his live stream on the night that Natalie's life was unfortunately cut short. And in particular, it's 
rather unusual and almost convenient timing. After further analysis, it was concluded, of course, this live stream wasn't much of a live stream after all. It was pre-recorded. Its overall quality and compression was different from the rest of his channel, and Steven claimed to not be able to interact with the viewers throughout the stream due to difficulties with his setup. Whatever that is meant to mean. So, after this point, Steven was re-arrested, of course, for obvious reasons. But... He literally admitted straight up that he had pre-recorded this faked live stream, but instead he had actually been watching it back the whole time while getting wasted. And that was the excuse from that point on. On the contrary, all it would take would be a look at the CCTV replays of a camera in the vicinity of the victim's house and on a bus that drove 19 miles from Stephen's home to Natalie's to find a man with Stephen's height, build, and clothes to match. Traveling all the way there from his house in Redwood with gloves, a hoodie, and a mask. This individual was seen leaving her house with entirely new clothes, and clothes that matched what Stephen was wearing the next day when he called the police to report his dead girlfriend. Of course, Stephen was arrested big time and has been on trial for the first degree murder ever since. The defense argues that it was simply not him because, well, you can't not not prove it was. He was wisely given no bail opportunity anyway, and his live stream and channel was only recently terminated briefly before being reinstated for some reason. And when it comes to very incomprehensible crimes being committed by YouTubers seemingly being normal people up until that point, this is the most recent example, which also makes it all the more unsettling. And I do believe that this channel will probably once again become terminated, probably when this case is finally closed. Jack is a channel that we covered in the slamming success of the season 2 finale of YouTube Unsolved, and is actually more of a commenter than a YouTuber by any means. So basically the TLDR version is that Jack was a notorious YouTube commenter, literally like the kingpin of the YouTube comment section. So basically more like Justin Y, except not really too happy and enlightening and more like, I'm gonna lock my doors and windows. Jack stalked and harassed multiple YouTube users over many years. Jack wouldn't comment on popular videos all that much, but tons of smaller videos with next to no views. So it looks like I'm in the clear. Oh wait. And it looks like Jack specifically went after only a couple of people, despite his thousands of subscribers that he gained to his YouTube channel. These three victims, at least the ones who shared their story, detailed incrementally experiences of being stalked, harassed, followed, up to being physically confronted Jack would mail hundreds of his comments printed out to one user over five years. So you better just watch the video already so I could stop spoiling it, and then you could just give me some good watch time. And everything after that was basically pretty much over, and no one really ever heard anything from Jack again. My channel spurred up a whole lot of popularity with it, but afterwards, Jack was still silent. I was only recently informed that Jack had actually, for once and finally, taken the next step. Jack uploaded a video. Yep, on May 15th, 2023, the original Jack channel uploaded the video, Paris is way better in person, and it's a video of a house. In this video, it's a short clip, but in particular, the thing that really just kind of, like, seems very off about it is the fact that this is on Jack's channel, YouTube's most dangerous stalker. Now this video was saved to Google Drive. The link now leads to a page saying this video is no longer available due to a privacy complaint by a third party. And it may have well been only uploaded for a single day, but probably longer. The screenshot shows it was able to get over 200 views before the submitter had saved the video through YouTube Premium. 
Nice. What is Jack doing? Nobody knows. And what exactly did you mean by that? Either way, it was a great idea to get attention again. Jack thinks out of the box. Number three, the experiment. The experiment was a channel that uploaded six videos going from MVI 1 to MVI 6. Now these weren't just normal videos, per se. Just not entirely. They showed a bagged and tied up person in a dark room for minutes on end, basically doing nothing but squirming around. Each video, the so-called subject did something different. Now at one point in MVI 3, they ended up getting free, and a large man walks towards them off camera. Fav subject is the only information we're given. And playing all the videos on extremely enhanced exposure really does nothing to reveal much more. Now the real dark part comes in when we bring up the final MVI 6 video, which is a whole different scene entirely. Now, this video in particular took place in a bathtub that was full. And it was the same tied up subject who was wearing this cloth, except only a few seconds into this short video, while someone's arm reaches into the frame and does something completely incomprehensible. This was full out on YouTube, not Live League. And this video wasn't even taken down or removed for weeks after I mentioned the channel in an original Most Disturbing Channels episode. So just in case you're wondering what YouTube's priorities are, just buy premium already. So MVI 6 was removed eventually, but not until after my video had already given the channel thousands of views. Now if you want an uncensored version of this, well you're out of luck because you're not gonna get it. Unless you can just like smuggle one in from someone who happened to watch the original video who saved it in time. Maybe you can do that, but I don't think anyone actually saved it and it's definitely not in existence anywhere else. It really really doesn't look real after all anyway. You don't have to be an expert on CGI, but I can't show it either way for legal reasons. So the FBI came to my house and questioned me in person about this channel after I had released this video. Of course, I had nothing to offer to them. YouTube wasn't doing anything about it. But it was only afterwards, after I had released my main video and that had taken place, where all of a sudden, the channel itself released a live stream called Subject 20. And this stream went on for quite a few hours, and then all of a sudden this happened at the end of it. Now, this just looks so not real that it's just not even funny but at the same time there's no other good explanation the fact that i was visited by real fbi really just triggers some questions it wasn't like there was some game or mystery or secret puzzle behind the whole thing so no one decides to give this thing a second look because seriously to this day there's only been a couple solo investigations mostly from people who've seen my original video and all I know is, this deserves to be looked into further, and more needs to be found out about what all of this was. Now Tom B Vlogs is probably the most captivating mystery on this list, and that's because, well, he exposed all of North Korea. Now, Tom B Vlogs, also the channel used to be called All Truth Vids, made what is widely, at least considered by me as well, to be the one candidate of the single biggest leak of North Korea that anyone has made ever. Now, before the incident at hand, Tom B had made lots of discovery videos and traveling videos and also lots of unedited videos where he would talk about how his channel was being censored by his country. Now, I don't know if Tom lived in North Korea, or if that's even possible, on top of being able to access YouTube, but if it is possible by any means, then it's probably the reason he was able to film the sequence of videos that would lead up to his death. Unfortunately, no info comes out of North Korea, so other than the fact that we know that Tom B has been missing since 2021, 
there's not really any way for anyone to know what exactly happened to him. So after announcing beforehand that he would upload a series of uncut videos of his so-called experience in North Korea, Tom B's channel uploaded a total of nine videos combined with five hours of footage that seemed to be clandestine filmed secret footage, videos documenting different parts of North Korea. Now intermittently while Tom uploaded these videos, he also ran an account on Facebook called Into the Truth, where he had posted photos of where he was staying in North Korea all the way up until the point of his expected departure from the country. And it was also apparent that he had been traveling with a group of other tourists because of one of their testimonies of what exactly happened, but we will return to that at another point. On Facebook, in captions of his photos, Tom B or All Truth Vids would detail his exact plan to basically all out ditch the guided tour of Pyongyang and travel to multiple key locations that were strictly off limits. Since what is known of this footage that I could get some clips of from this website is that Tom rarely talked in most of these very long videos. I'm assuming to avoid drawing attention and even at some points to avoid making any noise at all as he was literally trespassing in North Korea. Basically, there was multiple hours of videos, essentially detailing his exact route and plan to expose North Korea, starting by filming a labor camp. Having somehow traveled across the countryside on foot for days, and hiding in seclusion. Most of the content for this reason would obviously be hard to sift through. What is known is, as per Tom's plan, he apparently made it all the way to one of the most guarded camps in the country over 90 miles from the city, before eventually returning back to Pyongyang. According to one of the members of the guided tour of which Tom B was a part of, he pre-planned his departure from the group and to arrive back a day before they were to be sent home. Tom actually arrived at the Pyongyang airport, but was stopped by multiple military guards and pulled to the side. This was the last anyone reported seeing Tom. So Tom basically arrived at the airport, just as expected along with all the other tour members, but instead of going back with them and going on the plane back to wherever they were supposed to go, Tom ended up being pulled aside and then never being seen by anyone again, as per at least the testimony of one of the other members. When all of this was uploaded, Many commenters thought the videos were in fact real, and implored Tom to stop for his own safety. But in a comment replying to one of his posts, he mentioned, I am alive, well, and in good conditions, at home. I'm happy to show. This was the last online activity ever by Tom. The only problem is, if we line up the dates of the Facebook post and every other video, we can determine that the last day of the tour was the 15th of April. Tom posted the last status update on the 17th, two days after he was pulled away from the tour group at the airport, and obviously not returned. His last and final post on Facebook occurred precisely two days after the last time he was seen, being basically apprehended by the very friendly North Korean military. So something doesn't seem to be adding up. His videos were then promptly removed and then re-uploaded to LiveLeak, but since LiveLeak has been shut down, we only have bits left over. One being a photo that appears to be a military guard. It should be noted that the official YouTube notice on the channel's removal was due to a legal complaint. So, did Tom write this? All of the content on the Facebook account was then removed and rebranded as Echo of Truth. Looking like a stock footage brochure website advertising North Korea as if it were a Royal Caribbean getaway, Echo of Truth is also the name of a YouTube channel that was terminated due to it presumably being tied to the North Korean government. I really hope for all intents and purposes that the overall condition of Tom is okay somehow. No one really knows if his name is actually Tom, but I'm assuming that it is. And maybe, just maybe, eventually more info will come out about it. 
but unfortunately due to just the sheer nature and the harsh reality of things, especially things surrounding North Korea, it's very not likely. As a bonus, you're gonna get even more. There is a YouTube channel called Trevor Jacob. Now this particular channel was an aviation channel, filming everything under the sun when it came to airplanes and flying them. On November the 24th, 2021, Jacob took off in his airplane from Lompoc Airport. Jacob mounted several video cameras on different parts of the airplane and equipped it himself with a parachute, a camera, and a selfie stick. Approximately 35 minutes after taking off, he was flying over a mountain range near the desert of Santa Maria when he encountered some kind of a problem. This escalated to the point where Jacob felt the need to grab his camera and everything he had with him and then jump out of the moving plane in the sky, abandoning it, falling with a parachute all the way to the ground. This video was then posted to his channel under the name of I crashed my airplane. And the only problem is that he definitely did crash his airplane, but it certainly wasn't an accident. Now this particular one is not actually one where it's banned. The video for some reason still remains up, so maybe it has something to do with the fact that YouTube just kind of remains neutral on it until there's some kind of official legal conclusion. That literally just might actually be the case with all of these. But either way, if that wasn't enough, Trevor Jacob decided before the cops could even get there to basically go back to the scene of the crash. He cut up and destroyed the wreckage of the plane over the course of that time and deposited the parts all over the place, basically in ditches, in bins at the airport and elsewhere which he then admitted in his plea agreement was done with basically in summary the intent of overall getting away with this of which then Trevor Jacob had admitted finally after being apprehended facing 20 years in jail he had pulled off just for the sake of wanting to make money the video with 4 million views that went up on his channel to date based off of the ad revenue would have only generated about one-tenth of the amount of money to cover the cost of the destroyed plane. Now that is what I call a good strategy. So I hope you enjoyed this list of disturbing, unsettling videos that are banned and should probably stay that way. Thanks again to the amazing members of this YouTube channel, and if you want to become one and support this channel, because this channel really needs it, to be honest with you, you can really help out by going below and signing up. It starts at only about $4 a month. And with all that being said, thanks for watching. My name is Dallas, also known as Inferness. You will see me in the next one. Goodbye.